The good news is we have significant improvements in our mid-facial deficiency treatments in the clinic. We combine the palatal expansion with the face mask therapy to overcome the mid-face deficiency on the growing patient. Hi, Jacob. Good morning. Good to see you this morning, buddy. Little five. Today, for Jacob, who is about six years old, we're going to get him started with his face mask in the early phase of therapy. So, Jacob, you haven't seen this yet, have you? This will be something we're going to use that will help make your top jaw grow and get a little bigger, okay? What we have here is the frontal support, and on the back, there's a little pad for comfort. And then at the cheek area, there's a little support region, and we can shape that to the cheek so that it matches the contour of the patient. So I can just take my knuckle and just gently curve this so that when it has been done, we can see there's a curvature that contours to his cheekbone. And then there's one size fits all, so we can take these in the flexible frame and open it for length or shorten it if it's a small patient. And so for Jacob, we can now take this and fit it to his face, so I'll disconnect the head strap Remove this temporarily so I can begin to size it to his face. So once it's here, we want to see the forehead portion be just above the eyebrow. And then, of course, the malar support be in its correct position. So right now, this is too long. So the good news is I can take this and in a gentle way just squeeze it to make it smaller so it matches his face. And then the front crib is down here where the elastics will attach from the expander. Now we want this part to be comfortable for the patient. So this easily disconnects, it's just Velcro. And the idea here is to have it be just tight enough so it stays to the face and to the head and not too tight so it compresses the face and becomes uncomfortable. And so for Jacob here, as we go to the face, we want this to rest comfortably on the frontal region and the malar region. And then the head cap assembly will just gently come around and it's just tight enough to keep it in its place during sleep. Not too tight, so that it's uncomfortable, and not too loose to permit it to dislodge. We use these makeup sponges for comfort. So the first week or two, to help the patient become accustomed to the appliance, this little comfort sponge can be inserted underneath the cheek pad. And it just kind of rests there and becomes like a little pillow. And so the mothers are instructed to use these if needed. And if the patient doesn't need them at all, that's fine too. Let's talk for a moment about the temporal mandibular joints. The reason we don't have a chin region on this face mask is because we do not want to compress the posterior attachment region of the temporal mandibular joints. That would be very unfavorable. Hi, Amanda. Hi. Thanks for coming in this morning. One of the beautiful things about patients that are younger is that we can develop the maxillary complex in about one year or less, and we want to overcorrect by about 20 or 30%. And I want to ask you, when you take this off in the morning, are your teeth sore? No. How about your cheeks and forehead? No. You're comfortable? Do you have any red marks where these little cheek areas are? No. Wonderful. Thanks for coming in. There you go. When you wake up in the morning, are you sore? No. Uh, do you have any little red spots? Mm, sometimes. Show us where. Right around the edge. And then how long does it take it to go away? Just a few minutes. And then you're okay after that? Mm -hmm. Do your teeth get sore? Good girl. Give me a five. Thanks for coming in today. What we have here is the expander with the extending arms along the buckle regions. The expansion part in the center, the buckle arms to permit the attachment of the elastics to the face mask. And then as the patient wears this, the front of the smile comes downward as the occlusal plane tips and improves during treatment. Let's clarify how we do the turns on the palatal expansion device with the face mask. We go a little slower so that the circummaxillary sutures are all affected over an extended time. So that means one or two turns per week, or you can do a burst of turns and then pause for two or three months and then do another burst of turns. Either way, we achieve the clinical objective. Hi, Sydney. She has her upper expander just as the lateral incisors are erupting. And with that, she has her protraction face mask. She's assembled it just fine. And you want to hook up your elastic, Sydney, for us, please? It's a little high on her face, so we'll just bring it down a little bit for comfort. We'd like to see this be near the malar process and this just above the eyebrows.
What we know about the younger patient is that compliance is better and the treatment response is much quicker. So younger is definitely better. Jacob's putting on his face mask. He already has an expander in his mouth. And so we've asked Jacob to wear this every night and he's worked himself up to wearing this every night when you go to bed. Is that right, Jacob? Yeah. And how was it to get used to it in the beginning? It felt uncomfortable until mm -hmm. you slept with it about three nights. Three nights and you got used to it. Very good. Typically, we ask patients to wear this about one hour per evening to get used to it, and that's for the first week. And then after that, we ask them to wear it about two hours an evening for the second week, somewhere around the third or fourth week that patients are typically able to wear it through the night as they sleep. And that becomes the only time that they really wear this. So the region on the forehead and the two side supports are sufficient to anchor the device while the elastics hook from the crib to the internal part of the expander. As Taylor is wearing this face mask, kids at this age in mixed dentition are going to have an expander in the upper and the face mask accompanying that so that we can affect and improve the mid-face deficiency. We know from research that after the kids have worn the expander and the mid-face protraction device, that even though they've had improvement, they return back to the same class three growth pattern. And of course, protraction on the patient having all permanent teeth means that we're going to get primarily dental movements forward, not so much skeletal movements. So Alexa, would you please place the uh, face mask for us? Typically, we would ask her to wear it at night. So when she goes to bed, she assembles this. And the way we can tell if the patient's wearing it consistently is generally they can find a way to place it without even looking in the mirror and get the parts in place and get comfortable and then wear it when she sleeps. Now from the face mask, you attach elastics, right Lex? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is that easy enough to do? Yeah. Are your teeth sore in the morning afterward or are you yes. comfortable? They get a little sore? And understand that the traction is a little heavier with the face mask to be able to bring the whole segment of the upper arch forward. And then to do that, we attach to this little arm that's in the side. She attaches the elastic from there up to the face mask and produces the protraction. I want to give a big smile so they can see it. I'm here with Greg, who is 13 years old, and we're developing the upper jaw to become normalized. He has a class three mid-face deficiency, and his growth prediction shows that the mandible will grow excessively at maturity. And what we want to do is develop the maxillary complex to have the normal width, the normal length, and nice smile, so that at maturity, if we need to do a surgical procedure to normalize the mandible, we'll already have a normalized maxillary component. At this point, we're going to have Greg hook up the elastics for us, and he's wearing this face mask at night with an expander and he attaches them from left side to right and from right side to left of the crib. Good job, Greg. Well, we also know that we must overcorrect. We must bring them forward about 20 or 30 percent more than the treatment goal. And we also know that the patient returns to the class 3 growth pattern that is part of their genetic condition. You know, it's better to build boys and shape the faces and jaws than to repair men with surgery later. Now, of course, surgery is beneficial, but there's a whole lot we can do with mid-face orthopedics on the growing child. You know, I want to thank Great Lakes Orthodontics for their efforts and their beliefs in our face mask therapy. And I want to leave you with some wisdom. Man's mind, once changed by these new ideas, can never return to its original dimension. Thank you very much.